I know, I know. I think Jim had some salient points about why. Happy to talk about it when we're done going through Target and Lowe's. Neither of them really had as strong of quarters as their competitors, Walmart and Home Depot, that we saw yesterday. And while Target warned just weeks into the quarter it was slashing prices to move excess inventory, it still fell well shy of twice lower profit expectations. Revenues came in as expected, comparable sales slightly short, but grew again year over year. Operating margins were just 1.2 percent, though Target forecasts it to be around 6 percent for the rest of the year. I spoke with Target's chief financial officer, Michael Fidelke, who said the retailer, quote, wanted to be aggressive and take action early and decided to take care of it now, which came at a cost as expected. He also said we accomplished what we wanted to with inventory. The value of the current inventory is $15.3 billion. That's still slightly ahead of the value at the end of the prior quarter. But Fidelki told me it's now a different mix of inventory. So more of what's selling, like food, beverage, essentials, health and beauty, and less of the discretionary products that frankly aren't. Target also brought in inventory early. Still, compared to second quarter of 2019, inventory is up $6 billion. Half of that, or $3 billion worth, Fidelki said, is from inflation in the cost of the goods. Elsewhere, Lowe's profit did beat the street, but its revenue and comp sales disappointed. The home improvement retailer did predict full year results would be at the high end of the forecast. Seasonal spring items did disappoint, and Lowe's do-it-yourself customers, which make up about three quarters of its total shopping base, they weren't as strong as Home Depot's pro customer, which makes up nearly half of its business. But Lowe's CEO Marvin Ellison isn't dissuaded by some recent soft housing data. He's optimistic for home improvement for the rest of the year, which might be what's holding up those shares here today, David and Leslie. All right. Well, I promised people you would, uh, and you did too, that we talk a little TJX as well, because as I say, <laughs> you know, it, it's about $3 billion less in market cap. The stock's actually up, uh, despite what was not a great quarter where they lowered guidance, I guess, and, and comp sales, right? Yeah, they did. And it is actually a really fascinating company in general. I think what Jim had to say in the last hour was interesting. We don't know a ton about the inner workings of TJX because, frankly, the executives just stay more on the quiet side when it comes to press. We haven't heard the conference call yet, so we don't know the full details. I found it interesting that the comp sales at TJX for home goods were fairly depressed, I think down 13 percent, if memory serves, which was worse than the street had expected when we have still been talking about the strength in home. And in general, this off-price retailer, TJX, does a really good job. They have this treasure hunt proposition, and they've really succeeded even in the age when so many of us have moved to e-commerce. They have very small e-commerce businesses, and that treasure hunt still reigns supreme. I think they're still going to be beneficiaries of a lot of this excess inventory that we've seen from other retailers, not necessarily the stuff that we didn't want, but the stuff that came in late were, frankly, just missed seasons or missed the opportunities that retail are choosing to offload. I don't think that's fully made its way through the system. And once it does, those off-price retailers should benefit. But David, I'd love to talk about this company more. I find it fascinating and a lot of respects. <laughs>